Okay, it's kit time. Put another kit together. I don't remember what this one is. <laughs> so we'll have to take a look and then I'll try to figure out what it is. Um, I had problems with my yellow tray last time, so I have a nice deep, uh, deep dish this time. So hopefully I won't spill it everywhere. No guarantees. I think my odds will be better. I picked these up at I Ikea for this particular purpose. Um, I think they were 49 cents. Uh, and then you could pay extra for a lid. Um, but I thought uh, they'd be great for shop use. So. Uh, kind of like a cereal bowl. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the PC board. Uh, hmm. Well, no hint there. Uh, it has a relay, so it's going to perform some function and turn something on and off. Uh, it has a place for a microprocessor, probably. Uh, oh no, it's not a micro. Hmm, what is it? Uh, a CD4093. What's a 4093? I don't remember. Uh, what other parts can we get a clue from? It has an LED, okay. Oh, and it has a black LED. Ah, oh, there we go. So it has some type of IR input and visible output. <laughs> this probably just tells you whether the relay is on or off. But it must do something depending on what the IR photodiode sees. So time to look it up on eBay, see what I purchased. Well, I bought a human infrared switch, DIY kit, infrared sensor switch, electronic production suite. Um, so, human infrared switch. Uh, let's see here. Quality devices, production is significantly improved, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's kit LIS-2. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, wait a minute, here we go. Uh, LIS-2 infrared sensor switch detects whether the infrared signal is inf reflected and emitted to determine whether there is an object in front so as to control the switching operation of the relay. Ah, so the this must be an IR LED and an IR receiver, so uh, it acts as kind of a, uh, a a reflective switch. So if something's in front of it, it does something, turns on the relay. The reference value sensing distance, 12 centimeters, actual distance on the reflector material used in the faucet, automatic hand dryers, and other equipment on. Huh. So put your hands in front of the dryer and dry your hands. So it's some type of reflective uh, uh, transmit receive type uh, type circuit. So that'll be fun. And it doesn't need anything too fancy. So a 40, what was that? 4093 will do all the job. So let's, let's take a look at a 4093. All right. Here's a Texas instrument data sheet. Uh, a 4093B is a CMOS quad two input NAND Schmidt trigger. So it's a quad NAND. Um, uh, can you see that? Let's see. Oh, there we go. So it's a quad NAND um, package, and but sh with Schmidt trigger inputs, uh, which would be very nice for a sensor. So you, you don't get uh, you don't get flickering of the sensor. It's either uh, on or off, and the in between is is uh, nice and solid, so, um, yeah, with hysteresis, right? Schmidt triggers have hysteresis. So it looks very good. Looks like the functional, functional diagram is actually a Schmidt trigger NAND, uh, followed by two inverters, uh, probably for higher, higher uh, output. Um, but looks like, uh, Looks like that's all we need. Um, 
I think there's some transistors. Uh, there's a 9012 transistor, uh, which might be PNP. And there's three transistors down here, uh, which seem to be 9012s. So maybe they're all NPN. Um, so one, two, three, four transistors. These are probably an amplifier for the photodiode. And this might be some type of driver for the uh, For the relay, um, yeah, let's get together and uh, build it. All right, I picked out all of the uh, resistors to put those on first. I'm surprised by the number of resistors. It's such a tiny board. There's a ton of resistors. And uh, the way that I normally do this is um, I don't rely on the color codes. Um, like, I know these are 10Ks, but um, maybe ones I recognize, but... Uh, most of the time, I'll measure each one with a, a multimeter before I stuff it in the board, just to just to double check. Um, sometimes the color cuts can get confusing because of uh, uh, the tolerancing. Sometimes it's four bands, sometimes it's three bands. And uh, anyway, I'm not very good at reading the colors anyway, other than ones I sort of recognize. Um, but uh, yeah, so I will measure them and shove them in the board. All right there we go. All the resistors are loaded. Uh, it's interesting, there's some uh, 1 watt resistors. There's a 100 ohm 1 watt here, and there's a 33 ohm 1 watt there. Um, I believe this 100 ohm 1 watt is driving one of the, uh, is driving the emitter. Uh, there's an emitter detector pair here. Um, so the emitter is being driven with this 100 ohm resistor 1 watt, so this one's outputting quite a bit of light. And the receive LED is going into this, uh, uh, transistor here, amplifier, and there's some feedback around it with a 10 meg resistor and a 5 meg resistor, um, so quite a bit of gain here. Um, so that's what's going on there. Um, all right, so what should we put on next? Uh, let's see if we can find some capacitors and put those on. All right, I'll put on some capacitors. Uh, looks like some point ones here. Uh, there's a 47 microfarad and a 100 uh, microfarad. Um, so I think next, um, let's put on all the transistors. Um, go from there. All right, got the transistors in. Uh, these four here are PNP, strangely enough. Um, and uh, this one all by itself is, uh, is NPN. It's probably driving the uh, relay. But having PNP amplifiers is a bit interesting, but that works fine. So I think uh, let's put in the diodes next. I'm pretty sure that uh, D1 is the receiver, which is the uh, the black one. Uh, the reason they paint them black, or paint them black, the plastic is a black, is that uh, it's uh, not... Uh, transparent to visible light, but it is transparent to infrared light. In fact, most things that are black are trans transmissive in the infrared. Um, so we will put we will put that one there. Uh, this must be the emitter uh, driven by that 100 ohm resistor, so we'll put that one there. This is the little amplifier, right? And then uh, there is one more LED over here, which is red in color, and uh, put that one over there. And then there's some other diodes, uh, so we'll put everything back in. So that's next. All right, so we put in a bunch of diodes. Uh, there's some little switching diodes here. It's like a, a 1N914. There's some power diodes here, like 1 amp diodes. One of them is for the power to go through, 12 volts. The other one's probably a snubber for the, uh, for the relay. And I went ahead and loaded some connectors and a uh, potentiometer here. Um, so all we need to do now is load the um, socket for the IC and load the relay and we should be done. Okay, we're uh, ready to test. Um, so they give you a little uh, a little wire here for power. So we'll pop that on. Uh, I have 12 volts ready, so we will put 12 volts on the wire here. If that's ground and that's plus five. All right. Uh, 
nothing happening. Hmm. Let's see if we can show it something bright. No. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's adjust it. I got the LEDs in right way around. That's always a challenge figuring out what's the uh, anode and cathode of LEDs. I believe the anode is the long one. Um, and that's what I used here. Um, hmm. We could try to see if we're emitting emitting light from the uh, from this LED. I think that's the that's the first test that we'll do. Um, I have something for that, so let me, uh, let me go find it. Right, I found it. I used to carry it with me in my, uh, in my bag. Um, I do a lot of optics for my consulting business. Um, and uh, this is a, uh, a Kodak IR detection card. It's sensitive to um, 700 nanometers to 1300 nanometers otherwise known as 0.7 to 1.3 microns. Um, and on the back of the card it has this chemical. And this chemical is very interesting. It um, um, charges with room light, so the um, atoms become excited by the uh, photons in the room, the visible photons. And then if they ever see um, infrared photons, they'll give up those photons they've captured and give them off as light. So we can show that here. Here I've just got a remote control. And uh, I will shine the remote control. Uh, I think you can see that. Yeah. So uh, it turns it into kind of an orange light. Oh yeah, if I shield, shield the room lights, I think you'll be able to see this better. Yeah. So uh, let me turn off the room light, just to make it more exciting. That'll be better. There you go. Much, much better. So you can see the, the light coming out of the, uh, out of the remote. And you can kind of see it flashing and it's digital code depending on which button you press. All right. So we have this, um, circuit here. And there should be light coming out of this diode. And I know you can't see it on camera because it's on the back side, but no, there's no light coming out. So maybe I put those darn things in backwards. So here's, here's the uh, LED here. And I will shine it on the card and nothing. There's no light coming out. Yikes. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have a... Uh, we have an on condition now. Well, that's interesting. Um, maybe I just by touching the uh, touching the circuit board, I uh, trip the circuit. That is interesting, though. Let me uh, turn the potentiometer. It's probably the yeah. That's the time on. So there we go. If I touch the uh, uh, detection diode. It's like I'm leaking current and um, making the LED come on. So it's if it was working, that's what it would work. If we put our hand in front of it, it would see the reflected light and turn on. So we know that the circuit's working. The, I hear the relay clicking. So everything is operating except for the LEDs. So it's possible I got these in backwards. So uh, I think the best thing to do would be to remove them and then uh, check them out with a diode tester. Uh, make sure they're okay and in the right way. 
Otherwise, I think we'll be up and running. All right, well, that was hilarious. Um, I turned the board over to take a look at the desoldering the uh, oops, desoldering the uh, two LEDs, and I noticed I'd only soldered one side of them. Um, normally, what I do is I only solder one side, and then I press on the LED while I heat up that solder and let it set to the board. And I did that with both, so now both are set to the board, meaning to go back and solder the other side once I did that. And I never did. <laughs> so only one side of these diodes was soldered down. So I did load them correctly, I just didn't completely solder everything. So you can see now that if you wave your hand in front of it, the uh, uh, LED is coming on. Can you see that? Uh, yeah, you can see the LED fire over here. Uh, and... Uh, so it's all working great. Uh, it's pretty sensitive. Uh, I can wave about uh, about four inches away, something like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then I believe this um, tensiometer sets how long it, it'll be on. Yeah, it's staying on for a longer period of time now. Alright, let's turn it all the way down. I like it. Nice. So, works as uh, anticipated. Um, I don't know if there's a schematic for this or not. Uh, I didn't check. But, um, quite a few components. It's a nice kit to build. Um, a good selection of things. There's transistors, there's little diodes, big diodes, there's little resistors, big resistors, uh, ICs, there's connectors. It's, it's a very nice, I think this would be a great first kit for somebody to build um, since there's so many things. Um, the only tricky part for a beginner would be to make sure the diodes are in the right way. Um, uh, the silk screen is a little hard to see. I had to use a magnifying glass to figure out which way they wanted the uh, the diodes in, but I think you can do that, especially somebody with good vision. Um, again, the LED anodes are longer, just as just as um, electrolytic capacitors. The plus side is longer, so you can you can kind of remember that the plus side of the capacitor is long, and the plus side of the uh, diode is long. Um, and I suppose the uh, the output can be. Uh, uh, let's see here, what does this say? Uh, yeah, it's good for AC, so you... I don't think I want to hook AC up to that tiny little connector on this board, but you could fire AC with this. Um, but yeah, uh, probably it would be good for a motor, or maybe LED lighting, 12 volt lighting, things like that. Um, yeah, very nice kit.